When I say wave, oftentimes you will think about a diagram that looks something like this, and the one behind my head, right? You've probably drawn it before in your high school. You've probably maybe seen a ripple tank before, right? Or maybe you could have even drawn something that looks like this, all right? So a lot of time when we think of wave, there is like a picture that comes to mind. But what exactly is wave? How do we describe it? What are the types of wave? And how do we know whether something is a wave? So for this entire topic, waves, and also the next topic, which is superposition, we're gonna go into a very, very deep dive into the pool of waves, pun intended. So let's go. Check out my dude, it's so getting the gains in the gym. This is called a battle rope. People use it to exercise, good for posture, good for cardiovascular health. You can see him, he's waving, he's moving the rope up and down. All right, so there is the movement of his hands, and there is also this sinusoidal shape or the wave shape that I drew behind my head. So we want to be able to describe this, and we realize that in this movement, you can see his hand is moving up and down, right? But although this is a GIF, you realize that the wave is actually traveling from him towards the left side of the picture. Right. So these two different movements actually allows us to realize that some of the wave travel this way. There is a disturbance, his hand is moving up and down, and his hands are the one that gives the battle ropes energy so that the rope itself will move from him towards the left. Time to bring in the sign C terms. All right. So what all the waves I've shown you just now, they are all transverse wave. Okay. So don't, don't look at the dots first, look at this blue color one in front of me. You see this blue color wave, it is moving from this side, from this side, this side, this side, all the way to that side, right? It is moving from left to right, the pattern. But let's check out this red dot. You imagine, you know, on the battle rope, right? I stick a rubber duck on the battle rope. Ah, so I do exercise, but I put the, a rubber duck there for company lah, because I'm forever alone, you know. And anyway, if I put a toy or a marker on this position, you'll realize that this marker or this red dot only move up and down. So we have two directions of motion. We have this blue color wave pattern that's traveling from left to right, and we have this dot here that we will call the wave particle. It is a point, it is a particle on the wave. That is moving up and down okay and this movement is very different than the one you see on top the orange color dot but miss this orange dot what means i don't understand what the dot represents well this is a type of sound wave let me show you so if you look at sound wave sound wave consists of a speaker you know that kind of like vibrates in and out in and out to so you can see this speaker cone, you know, you can, ah yeah, this one cannot see air particle, ma, right? So we scientists, we pretend to draw, okay? So we pretend to draw air particles and we imagine the speaker cone, tuk, 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 tuk. so the speaker cone is pushing the air particle, pulling back, pushing the air particle, pulling back, pushing the air particle, pulling back. And what happens when the speaker cone displaces or push against the air particle? It's a bit like the air particle gets squished forward and then push back. Squish forward, push back. Teacher, does it mean that the air particle is traveling from the loudspeaker to this point? Well, this one will be hard to see because everything is black dots. So uh, we are going to just highlight a row of air particle okay the blue color air particle now you see yeah what this blue color air particle does is that it actually travels to the back or travels closer to the speaker get some energy pass it on to the right go back get some energy pass it on to the right go to the left get some energy pass it on to the right where does the energy come from the speaker this 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 black line is supposed to be this speaker Okay, so what the speaker does is that it moves in and out, or rather left and right. It passes the energy to the air particle. The air particle passes it to the blue dot. The blue dot passes it forward, like now, and go back and collect more energy. Pass it forward again, go back, collect more energy. It's like station game, like you want to pass water, you know? Take, pass, pass. Transfer of energy. Waves are transfer of energy. Okay?
So the interesting thing here that I'm not sure whether you realize is that number one, this movement of the wave shape or the wave pattern looks like it's moving from left to right, but the air particle or the dot, dot, dot also move from left to right. So now this is the difference between longitudinal and transverse, and we're now going to write that down. Define transverse wave. Sorry, uh, typo. Uh, transverse wave. Okay, let's define transverse wave and also label the important points on the wave profile. Okay, so a quick reminder, these things are supposed to be moving and there's no way for us to actually have it moving on a piece of paper. So draw this, but also keep in mind that we are visualizing two different objects that are moving. Now, transverse wave is the very first wave we look at. The blue wave that is moving uh, from left to right and the red color dot that is moving up and down. So on this side here, so let's draw the diagram first before we write the definition. Transverse, so typo, yeah? Just cross out the E, okay? So what, what this uh, rectangle represents or this square represents is the wave particle. Okay, this wave particle is this box. And you will see that this uh, wave particle is moving up and down, okay? So I'll label that, I'll call this the wave particle okay and this uh, up and down direction would be the well we can call it the direction of vibration although a better term instead of vibration is oscillation so direction of vibration or oscillation so we realize that the particle is moving up and down, but we also have direction of wave propagation. Direction of wave propagation is also known as the direction of energy transfer. So the energy will transfer, let's say from left to right. I wanna point out that the term that we're looking for is this 90 degree. This thing is perpendicular. You have your particles moving up and down, but the wave shape is actually traveling from left to right. Okay, so this would be the definition of transverse wave, where we can say that the direction, so this is all about direction, okay? So direction of oscillation of wave particle, the box, okay, is perpendicular, 90 degree, to the direction of energy transfer or the direction of wave propagation both are fine okay so since we have this shape already we probably need to like define certain stuff so there are certain things that i will leave to the second video but i just want to point out that you know they are the maximum points are kind of important so you want to give them a name all right and these maximum points are known as either peaks okay so we can call this just gonna label this point this one, this one. okay so we can call them peak or we can call them crest okay so all these are crest 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 okay and what about the bottom one you know this minimum point this one is known as trough okay so this point here is, maybe I'll change color. Okay, this point here is known as trough, T. This one is T. Okay, so just the important points. So transverse wave, the main defining thing is the direction of oscillation of wave particle is perpendicular. You see this beautiful 90 degree here? One is moving up and down, one is moving left to right, perpendicular, okay, to the direction of energy transfer, right? The second difference between this is that we label the maximum points, which is crest, and the minimum point, which is trough, all right? So this is the first type of wave, the one that uh, I showed you just now, this one, okay? So right now, what we have is uh, the transverse wave, and this thing is moving up and down, okay? So what about longitudinal wave? The motion 
of these red color dots are parallel to the movement of the shape pattern. So instead of dots, you know, I just represent layer of S by these uh, circles, okay, these uh, 3D circles. But you can see this one actually shows us the direction of vibration of your wave particle. Look at this red dot, can I zoom in? Look at this red dot, it's moving left and right. So look at this wave particle, it's moving left and right. Look at the direction of movement of the dots. The dots is like moving from left to right as well. You see the shape or the pattern is transferring. Okay. Another thing to note is that in this longitudinal wave, you have regions where the particles are really close together, like here, and you have regions where the particles are far apart, like here. Okay. So I want you to be able to label all these important points, okay, and also to be able to define what longitudinal waves are. All right. So once again, this uh, left and right motion, this one is the direction of oscillation of your wave particle. All right. This thing here is still my wave particle. All right, so the particle is going to oscillate this way, but where's the direction of wave transfer or energy transfer? That would be in this direction too. So from here to here, I'll draw for you. This is the direction of energy transfer. And you can see that this thing is parallel. Okay. All right. So another thing to point out is that when all the layers of airs are close together, we like to call this uh, region where they are close together, I'm going to shade it as blue. This region where the particles are close together, we will call them region of compression. Because all the particles are compressed together. Okay, so I guess just region of compression. All the particles are like squished together. And when the particles are squished together, you also realize, I mean, the diagram is a bit slightly off, but you realize that at the region of compression, the pressure is higher because all the particles are very close together. Lots of collisions, so high pressure. And when this one is far away, we call this one the region of rarefaction. Rarefaction here means that the particles are very far apart, so rare. No? So normally we'll label this one as R. So region of rarefaction. Let me highlight this one as green for you. This is the region of rarefaction. And the region of compression, I'll label it as C. Okay, so the region of rarefaction is here where the pressure is lower and the region of compression is here where the pressure is highest because they all push together. Okay, so sometimes they will draw a sinusoidal shape. You know, if I draw the pressure difference, I will still get a sine curve. Okay, but if I look at the particles, the motion of the air molecules, you know, and the direction of propagation of sound is parallel. Okay, these two, let just label again parallel okay and sometimes um, you'll be required to label the region of compression compression it's pretty obvious if they draw this kind of dot dot diagram this is c this is c this is r this is r okay particles are far apart all right so let's define longitudinal wave first longitudinal wave has the same definition the only difference is we're going to change the word parallel, I mean, sorry, perpendicular to parallel, okay? Because at the end of the day, it's about movement, right? So for longitudinal wave, I would say that the direction of what is moving, what is moving? Oscillation of wave particle. Is parallel to the direction of energy transfer, or in this case, for just to spice things up and change things a bit, the direction of propagation of wave. You can also call it energy transfer. 
So the wave is actually traveling from left to right. Obviously, the energy is also transferring from left to right. Okay, they will always be in the same direction. So it's the propagation. All right. So a few more things to, to take note. So sometimes students, you know, especially if there are only two, you may confuse them. Okay. So here's a handy thing I use to remember the parallel to the direction of propagation of wave. Because the word longitudinal has two parallel L. So or not? So because of this, I remember, oh, longitudinal wave, the motion of wave particle and energy transfer parallel. And guess what is it? Guess what letter is in the word of transverse wave? Transverse wave consists of a capital big T. And at the capital T, there is a 90 degree. Okay? So because of the 90 degree, we have this perpendicular to the direction of wave transfer. Okay? There's a, there's a 90 degree in the word transverse. So perpendicular. There are two parallel lines in the word longitudinal. So parallel law. Okay. All right, to wrap things up, um, I'm just going to provide some examples. We've already seen it. So the example of longitudinal waves is only one sound wave. Okay, that creates that pressure difference and the compression and refraction. Particles close together, compress. Particles far apart, refract. Okay, and also at the same time, transverse wave is the one with more examples. I'm just going to write them down. Examples of transverse wave includes water wave, electromagnetic wave. Ah, this is coming soon to another video. Electromagnetic wave, also known as light. Okay, and all those kind of string wave or waves that forms on ropes are tend to be transverse, okay? So in this video, we have looked at many, many different pictures, diagram, feel free to Google more for yourself, about what happens when a wave carries energy, okay? So the very definition of wave, especially progressive wave, is a movement. We're moving energy from one point to another point. There are two types of movement. There is the 90 degree movement that we call transverse wave, wave particle moving 90 degree to the wave shape. Okay, and then we label the some key points where you get maximum and minimum. And then you also have wave particle moving parallel to the wave shape. Then we define certain points where the particles are close together and they are far apart. And we wrote down their definition and also provided some just quick examples. All right. So when you think about wave, it's time to speed run more videos and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.